Hello everyone. In this video we will showcase how to control motion tweening for uh, classic tweening in a little bit more detail. Now this differs both from uh, regular motion tweening and shape tweening in the way it has to be set up. I'm going to be using the movie that I'm going to be picking up on the movie that I was working on last time. So that is the, the motion tweening movie that I was working on. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to create me a new layer. I'm going to double click it and I'm going to call that one uh, classic for classic tweening. And I'm going to turn off the visibility and I'm going to lock that motion tweening layer that I was working with before. Now with this done, what I want to do is reuse that symbol that I was working with on the motion layer. I am going to go to the library and I'm going to drag that circle symbol that we had created before. So that symbol is now on the stage. It's an instance of that particular uh, symbol. Right here it says an instance of circle. And I want to center it on the stage. So just basically the same setup that we worked with, that we started with with the other movie. Now in this case, we're going to be using classic tweening. For classic tweening, as you know by now, you need to have a symbol. symbol uh, a classic tween will not work with a shape tween. If you do so, the program will automatically create a symbol for you and assign a random name to it that might not be something that you want within your workflow. What that will do is it will create extra material in your library that you might not be aware of that will make it a lot more difficult to go back and update files if you need to do so. And most likely, 99% of the time, you need to go back and update materials. So with that said, let's go ahead and select that lay that um, that symbol on the stage. And you'll notice that it is now my first frame in the frame one on my classic layer. Remember, when I create a new layer, it, it, it starts with an empty frame. And if I put any symbols or any graphics or any shape on it or any uh, images, it will automatically get full and that showcases that 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 tells me that that keyframe is active that I have a full keyframe now this is since this is going to be classic tweening what I want to do then is I need to create another keyframe for that particular symbol at frame 30 now I can do one of two things I can go ahead and right click and say insert frame and insert frame will actually just push an extra frame into this because that's an empty frame but I can also insert a keyframe, which will make a copy of that previous keyframe. Or I can insert a blank keyframe. Blank keyframe being that empty circle that is basically waiting for something to be dropped into it. In this case, we want to make a copy of that last keyframe. So we want to create a keyframe, insert keyframe. You can also use the F6 key on your keyboard to actually insert a keyframe. Now you'll notice that there's no difference between the two because the second one is a copy of the first one. To activate motion tweening on this layer, I want to right click and go to classic tween. That's what we're trying to do this time. So we're going to create a classic tween. What happens now is that these frame, these two frames will be animated between them. So that purple area with the arrow is the tweening area between the two keyframes at the beginning and at the end of my layer. So if I say go to my frame 30 layer and make sure that I am there by clicking on it, I'll select the, the instance of that graphic on the stage and I'm going to use my uh, free transform tool. I'm going to click and drag and I'm going to press shift to constrain the, motion, the, the change that I'm making. Now, so if, if I play it back, you'll notice that basically I have the animation already created. Now, this is as in the instance with motion tweening, it is a, uh, a linear animation. So this might not be what I am trying to create. So what I want to do in an instance like this, if I want to ease in or ease out of these frames, what I want to do is I want to select the frame itself, the frame that I'm affecting. And you'll notice that the properties window becomes specific to the frame that I am selected. So if I select this frame, you'll notice that these are all the properties for that classic tween for, um, layer or for that classic tween um, a keyframe. So with that done, what I want to do is if I, let's say, for example, I want to enter some kind of easy and into that, I would have to go into the classic ease and classic ease gives me a, a, a set of um, presets similar to the ones. As a matter of fact, it's almost the same as what we had on the motion tweening including even a custom one. Now the difference between the custom one 
that we have here and the one that we have in uh, motion twinning is that I have to click new and create a new custom setup for it. But basically the settings are very similar. So if I want ECs in, ECs out, EC in and out, you have options for all of those. So let's go ahead and say I want this to be quad and I want, you know, I want it to be cubic ECs in. That means it's going to slowly go transform slowly as it begins and then speeds up as it goes towards the end. That's the motion that this graph indicates. It stays slow at the beginning and it speeds up as it goes afterwards. So let's say I want that. Well, I'll just double click on this. Double click on that one and then that's it. I am done. The, uh, the motion tween has been added to it and if I play it back, you'll notice right away that it's it sort of hangs back for a little bit before, before it takes off. So that's also an option for, there's that option for EC in or EC out in these frames if I need to. I can also edit that by going into that editing uh, with that little uh, pencil. If I click on it, I get a custom ease automatically out of that. And it allows me to click on the frames the way it did on the motion tween. And it allows me to modify my, the curvature of whatever I'm affecting in this case. So uh, since I am working on my classic uh, on my um, classic tweening option, it will just basically change that particular thing, and uh, it allows me to name it if I want to, and it allows me to save it if I want to. So it gives me a name. I can also reset the curve if I want to to what the way it was originally when I first came into this graph. So you have options to manipulate this similarly to the way you did with motion tweening. I am going to do the reverse. It's going to go fast at the beginning beginning and slow at the end and I'm going to click save and apply please. And what's going to happen now is going to go fast at the beginning and slow down as it increases in size. That's exactly what I wanted it to do. So it works just fine. That is how you control easing in uh, classic tweening. Uh, albeit it's pretty much the same as you do in, uh, in um, motion tweening. But the, the difference is that the graphs pop out everywhere, as you can see, as opposed to it being connected to the actual layer. Um, with that, you can also you also have the options to snap things to paths and such. We will be talking about these in more detail in the near future.